In this listening test, you will hear a total of seven texts. Each text will be read twice. In the booklet, you will see the questions and the three possible answers to the questions. Only one of the three answers is correct. Choose the correct answer and shade your answers one, two, three on the optical sheet at any time during the test. Open your book now. The test is about to begin. Listen to text one and answer question one and two. You will hear a father talking to his children about the plans for a birthday celebration. Mina, Sanjay, your mom's birthday is coming soon. Shall we celebrate it at her favorite restaurant? Well, we went there recently. How about a surprise celebration at home? Or why not try an outdoor celebration at the beach? That sounds fun, but the weather can be unpredictable at this time of the year. I prefer Mina's idea. What presents are you giving her? I'm getting a purse for her. She likes the one she's using now. What about a bottle of perfume instead? I had considered that, but the purse she's using now looks old. Perfume is pricey, so I'll get her a pair of sunglasses. What about you, Dad? Um, I was deciding between a cookbook and a watch. That's easy. Mom already has a few watches. Besides, we can eat what she cooks. You're right. I'll get the birthday cake too. Question 1. Where will the family celebrate Mother's birthday? Question 2. What will Mother receive for her birthday? Listen to text 1 again. Mina, Sanjay, your mom's birthday is coming soon. Shall we celebrate it at her favorite restaurant? Well. We went there recently. How about a surprise celebration at home? Or why not try an outdoor celebration at the beach? That sounds fun, but the weather can be unpredictable at this time of the year. I prefer Mina's idea. What presents are you giving her? I'm getting a purse for her. She likes the one she's using now. What about a bottle of perfume instead? I had considered that. But the purse she's using now looks old. Perfume is pricey, so I'll get her a pair of sunglasses. What about you, Dad? Um, I was deciding between a cookbook and a watch. That's easy. Mom already has a few watches. Besides, we can eat what she cooks. You're right. I'll get the birthday cake too. Listen to text 2 and answer question 3 and 4. You will hear two friends talking about the co-curricular activities open house at the entrance to the school hall. Hi, Jenny. I'm excited to choose my co-curricular activity today. I'll visit the Boy Scouts booth first because I'm keen to join a uniformed group. Then, I visit the Science Club because it deals with my favorite subject. I decide after that and indicate my choices on the option form. I'm excited too, Yazid. I'm considering the drama club, but my parents suggested the girl guides. Shall we check out the uniform groups together? From there, we'll go to the next booth that interests us. I heard we can collect nice bookmarks at each booth. OK, but I want to use the coupon in the welcome pack to collect the refreshment first. Oh. I haven't collected my welcome pack yet. I was going to look for our form teacher to get the option form. Let me help you collect the welcome pack. I'll see you at the booths for uniformed groups after I've exchanged our coupons for refreshment. Thanks, Jenny. By the way, do you have a pen to fill in the option form? I forgot to bring mine. There's one in the welcome pack. It also provides a brochure that gives information about the co-curricular activities. Great. See you later. Question 3. Which of the three lines shows the route that Jenny will take? Question 4. What is inside the welcome pack?
Listen to text two again. Hi, Jenny. I'm excited to choose my co-curricular activity today. I'll visit the Boy Scouts booth first because I'm keen to join a uniformed group. Then, I visit the science club because it deals with my favorite subject. I decide after that and indicate my choices on the option form. I'm excited too, Yazid. I'm considering the drama club, but my parents suggested the girl guides. Shall we check out the uniform groups together? From there, we'll go to the next booth that interests us. I heard we can collect nice bookmarks at each booth. OK, but I want to use the coupon in the welcome pack to collect the refreshment first. Oh, I haven't collected my welcome pack yet. I was going to look for our form teacher to get the option form. Let me help you collect the welcome pack. I'll see you at the booths for uniformed groups after I've exchanged our coupons for refreshment. Thanks, Jenny. By the way, do you have a pen to fill in the option form? I forgot to bring mine. There's one in the welcome pack. It also provides a brochure that gives information about the co-curricular activities. Great. See you later. Listen to text 3 and answer question 5, 6 and 7. You will hear an extract from a radio programme. In today's segment of Encounter with Animals, a listener, Jane, called our radio station to share her encounter with a monkey. Let's hear her story. Yesterday, I noticed rubbish around the bin outside my house. I wasn't alarmed as it's common for monkeys from the nearby forest to ransack the bins. When I went to the kitchen, I discovered my cake missing. I thought I placed it elsewhere, that is until I spotted tiny paw prints. Before I could react, a monkey suddenly leapt out and scared the daylights out of me. I screamed as it ran around the kitchen. I panicked and grabbed a broom. I hit the floor with it, hoping to scare the monkey. Perhaps, threatened by the noise, the monkey scratched my hand before scuttling away through the open window. On hindsight, it would have been better if I'd run out of the kitchen. My neighbor said that having a dog has helped to keep monkeys away from her house. My family isn't keen, although I like that idea. I asked a National Park spokesperson about how to handle such a situation. He advised me to close all windows when no one's home or to install window grills. Sigh, since I can be absent-minded at times, I know what I should do now. Question 5. Which picture shows the time when Jane first sensed something was amiss? Question 6. What should Jane have done when she encountered the monkey? Question 7. Which picture shows what Jane has decided to do to stop monkeys from entering her house? Listen to text 3 again. Yesterday, I noticed rubbish around the bin outside my house. I wasn't alarmed as it's common for monkeys from the nearby forest to ransack the bins. When I went to the kitchen, I discovered my cake missing. I thought I placed it elsewhere, that is until I spotted tiny paw prints. Before I could react, a monkey suddenly leapt out and scared the daylights out of me. I screamed as it ran around the kitchen. I panicked and grabbed a broom. I hit the floor with it, hoping to scare the monkey. Perhaps, Threatened by the noise, the monkey scratched my hand before scuttling away through the open window. On hindsight, it would have been better if I'd run out of the kitchen. My neighbor said that having a dog has helped to keep monkeys away from her house. My family isn't keen, although I like that idea. I asked a National Park spokesperson about how to handle such a situation. He advised me to close all windows when no one's home or to install window grills. Sigh, since I can be absent-minded at times, I know what I should do now. Listen to text 4 and answer question 8, 9, and 10. You will hear an extract from a new report. This year's recipient of the Exemplary Educator Award is Mrs. Tanya Lee. 
She is one of the few who received many nominations. Mrs. Lee, who is coincidentally receiving the Long Service Award for 20 years of service in education, stands out with her readiness to go the extra mile for her students. This is what one of her students, John, said. I used to think I was hopeless in Max and found it hard to follow the lessons. But Mrs. Lee taught me not to give up easily. She used lots of real-life examples to help us understand Max. She gave some of us extra coaching. With more practice, I started to improve. Now, I can even coach others who are weak in Max. When interviewed, Mrs. Lee said, I know John has the potential to perform better. Many teachers told me they enjoyed teaching him because he's hardworking. I'm proud of his progress and have entrusted him with the responsibility to help the weaker ones. Some people have asked me how to be a good teacher. Would tell them it's not easy to be one. But what keeps me going is my love for teaching. If we enjoy what we do, work will not become a chore. Naturally, I'm glad when my students tell me love inspired them to chase their dreams. Question 8. The winner of the Exemplary Educator Award is selected based on 1. The years of service 2. The number of nominations 3. The level of commitment shown Question 9. Under Mrs. Tonya Lee's guidance, John has become more 1. Attentive and diligent 2. Confident and resilient. Three, helpful and responsible. Question 10. What matters most to Mrs. Tonya Lee as a teacher? One, being an inspiration. Two, putting in extra effort. Three, pursuing one's passion. Listen to text four again. This year's recipient of the Exemplary Educator Award is Mrs. Tanya Lee. She is one of the few who received many nominations. Mrs. Lee, who is coincidentally receiving the Long Service Award for 20 years of service in education, stands out with her readiness to go the extra mile for her students. This is what one of her students, John, said. I used to think I was hopeless in Max and found it hard to follow the lessons. But Mrs. Lee taught me not to give up easily. She used lots of real-life examples to help us understand Max. She gave some of us extra coaching. With more practice, I started to improve. Now, I can even coach others who are weak in Max. When interviewed, Mrs. Lee said, I know John has the potential to perform better. Many teachers told me they enjoyed teaching him because he's hardworking. I'm proud of his progress and have entrusted him with the responsibility to help the weaker ones. Some people have asked me how to be a good teacher. Would tell them it's not easy to be one. But what keeps me going is my love for teaching. If we enjoy what we do, work will not become a chore. Naturally, I'm glad when my students tell me love inspired them to chase their dreams. Listen to text 5 and answer question 11, 12, and 13. You will hear a TV host interviewing a young hawker. Let's welcome Billy Wong, a 28-year-old hawker. Billy, tell us why you've become a hawker. I love eating at hawker centers. It's a special place where I bond with family and friends over delicious and affordable food. Unfortunately, many young people nowadays think otherwise. I wish to play a part in helping him appreciate the hawker food culture. It wasn't until my grandma gave me her secret recipe for chicken rice that I decided to become a hawker so that I can fulfill that wish. What is it like being a hawker? Oh, standing in front of the hot stove is uncomfortable but I'm used to it by now. Imagine working 12 hours daily. Do you know that a day as a hawker is similar to an intense workout at the gym? I wonder how I'll sustain this hectic work as I age. We also can't please everyone who tastes our food. While complaints discourage me, compliments make my day. Do you have any advice for aspiring hawkers? Firstly, if you're inexperienced, start small so that you don't need to invest too much money. When I first started, I struggled to make enough to cover expenses. 
My business improved later on and I'm earning much more now than from my previous job. So don't give up. Your efforts will be rewarded if you improve your recipe by listening to what people say about your food. Give it a try. No pain, no gain. You may even become a famous hawker one day. Question 11. Which statement about Billy Wong is true? 1. He hopes to promote the hawker food culture to youths. 2. He became a hawker to promote his grandmother's secret recipe. 3. He wants to promote hawker centres as a great place for bonding. Question 12. What is Billy Wong's greatest concern as a hawker? 1. Working long hours at the hawker centre. 2. Working in a hot and cramped environment. 3. Managing negative comments about his food. Question 13. According to Billy Wong, aspiring hawkers must 1. Have a lot of money to start a stall. 2. Be prepared to learn from feedback. 3. Overcome their struggles to achieve fame. Listen to text 5 again. Let's welcome Billy Wong, a 28-year-old hawker. Billy, tell us why you've become a hawker. I love eating at hawker centers. It's a special place where I bond with family and friends over delicious and affordable food. Unfortunately, many young people nowadays think otherwise. I wish to play a part in helping him appreciate the hawker food culture. It wasn't until my grandma gave me her secret recipe for chicken rice that I decided to become a hawker so that I can fulfill that wish. What is it like being a hawker? Oh. Standing in front of the hot stove is uncomfortable but I'm used to it by now. Imagine working 12 hours daily. Do you know that a day as a hawker is similar to an intense workout at the gym? I wonder how I'll sustain this hectic work as I age. We also can't please everyone who tastes our food. While complaints discourage me, compliments make my day. Do you have any advice for aspiring hawkers? Firstly, if you're inexperienced, start small so that you don't need to invest too much money. When I first started, I struggled to make enough to cover expenses. My business improved later on and I'm earning much more now than from my previous job. So don't give up. Your efforts will be rewarded if you improve your recipe by listening to what people say about your food. Give it a try. No pain, no gain. You may even become a famous hawker one day. Listen to text 6 and answer question 14, 15, 16, and 17. You will hear a story about how a girl saved her brother. Eric's father helped a rich man to look after his goats. One day, Eric's father fell ill. Eric had to cancel his fishing trip with his friends to take the goats to graze on the mountain. He had never done it before. Nevertheless, he put on a brave front so that his family would not worry about him. His sister, Dina, assured him by saying, You can do it. I'll join you on the mountain at lunchtime and get you some food to eat. When lunch was ready, Dina went up the mountain to look for Eric. However, she was surprised the goats were left unattended. She knew Eric was not the sort to run off to play, though he might have gone to look for her when he became hungry. Thinking that he might be wandering around, she searched for him. She ended up at the cave where a monster lived. When she saw her brother's hat at the cave entrance, she feared the worst. Unsure if he had been captured by the monster, she decided to search the cave. When Dina did not see Eric in the cave, she felt relieved. She was about to leave when she heard Eric's muffled moaning. Her blood grew cold. Dina was determined to save him even if it meant risking her own life. As an idea had come to her, she reached for the basket of food. A moment later, Dina found the monster and said, O oh mighty master, your humble servant has brought delicious food for you. Please accept my offering. The monster swallowed the food greedily and collapsed in a heap, not knowing that poisonous mushrooms had been added to the food. Seizing the chance, the siblings escaped from the monster. Question 14. How did Eric feel when he had to look after the goats? 
One, he wasn't sure as he was inexperienced. Two, he was unwilling to go to the mountain alone. Three, he was upset as he could not go fishing with friends. Question 15. What was Dina's first thought when she found Eric missing? 1. She thought he had gone somewhere to play. 2. She thought he had gone to look for her. 3. She thought he had lost his way. Question 16. Dina became certain of where Eric was when she 1. Heard him crying in the cave. 2. Searched for him in the cave. 3. Found his hat outside the cave. Question 17. Which quality helped Dina to save Eric? 1. Humility. 2. Cleverness. 3. Selflessness. Listen to text 6 again. Eric's father helped a rich man to look after his goats. One day, Eric's father fell ill. Eric had to cancel his fishing trip with his friends to take the goats to graze on the mountain. He had never done it before. Nevertheless, he put on a brave front so that his family would not worry about him. His sister, Dina, assured him by saying, You can do it. I'll join you on the mountain at lunchtime and get you some food to eat. When lunch was ready, Dina went up the mountain to look for Eric. However, she was surprised the goats were left unattended. She knew Eric was not the sort to run off to play, though he might have gone to look for her when he became hungry. Thinking that he might be wandering around, she searched for him. She ended up at the cave where a monster lived. When she saw her brother's hat at the cave entrance, she feared the worst. Unsure if he had been captured by the monster, she decided to search the cave. When Dina did not see Eric in the cave, she felt relieved. She was about to leave when she heard Eric's muffled moaning. Her blood grew cold. Dina was determined to save him even if it meant risking her own life. As an idea had come to her, she reached for the basket of food. A moment later, Dina found the monster and said, Oh mighty master, your humble servant has brought delicious food for you. Please accept my offering. The monster swallowed the food greedily and collapsed in a heap, not knowing that poisonous mushrooms had been added to the food. Seizing the chance, the siblings escaped from the monster. Listen to text 7 and answer question 18, 19, and 20. You will hear an extract from a talk. If you're at the Pinnacle Park on a Monday morning, you'll be greeted by an unusual sight of some adults pretending to brush their teeth, wash their faces, and comb their hair while laughing heartily. They seem to be rehearsing for a play, but they're actually having their laughter session. Led by Mr. Mohan, a certified trainer, they're practicing different types of laughter, together with some stretching and breathing techniques. Believing that laughter is the best medicine, Mr. Mohan formed this laughter club. He took some time to persuade people to buy into the idea. Most participants found it strange to laugh without reason. Although some of them try to cover their mouths while laughing, they're still self-conscious when practicing it outdoors. Laughing in a group helps as they can tease one another to lighten the atmosphere. Participants feel more refreshed and energetic after each session. Indeed, laughter strengthens our immunity as well as enhances our emotional and mental health. These positive effects have helped the club grow in number. Sharing a good laugh with friends also improves relationships. Best of all, laughter is fun and free. Question 18. What do participants learn in Mr. Mohan's club? 1. Acting skills. 2. Personal grooming. 3. An exercise routine. Question 19. Self-conscious participants find it easier to laugh when they 1. Try laughing with their friends. 2. Cover their mouths while laughing. 3. Have their laughing session indoors. Question 20. More people are joining the club because it 1. Is fun and free. 
2. Helps them make more friends. 3. Improves their overall well-being. Listen to text 7 again. If you're at the Pinnacle Park on a Monday morning, you'll be greeted by an unusual sight of some adults pretending to brush their teeth, wash their faces and comb their hair while laughing heartily. They seem to be rehearsing for a play but they're actually having their laughter session. Led by Mr. Mohan, a certified trainer, they're practicing different types of laughter, together with some stretching and breathing techniques. Believing that laughter is the best medicine, Mr. Mohan formed this laughter club. He took some time to persuade people to buy into the idea. Most participants found it strange to laugh without reason. Although some of them try to cover their mouths while laughing, they're still self-conscious when practicing it outdoors. Laughing in a group helps as they can tease one another to lighten the atmosphere. Participants feel more refreshed and energetic after each session. Indeed, laughter strengthens our immunity as well as enhances our emotional and mental health. These positive effects have helped the club grow in number. Sharing a good laugh with friends also improves relationships. Best of all, laughter is fun and free.